Who will have a chance to play for a gold ball? Well, we are minutes away from finding out in the final sports blitz of the season. Andrew Badillo, Blake Lifton, David Guilford over there. He's joining us. I'm John Alba. Let's get to it. Every year we talk about parity in Class B North. Parity, parity, parity. And there was no exception this year. That's right, Blake. That's why we're going to start in Class B with the number five, which is of Brewer and number one, Skowhegan. Skowhegan averaged just over 40 points per game Ooh. coming into this one, but they laid an egg to this point late in the second half. Brewer with a 7-0 lead. Cody Wood completes a long pass to Jacob McCluskey, who barrels his way forward for some much-needed chunk yardage. That play sets up Tyler Bean for this long field goal try, and he would hit it, get it so high I couldn't even catch up. He's wow. known for his big boot. Gives Brewer a 10-0 lead heading into the half. Not so fast. One second on the clock means there's one more play in store. John Bell trying to spark Scout Hegan. Oh. Andrew Kiley would Ooh. make big tackle uh, there. Last man big tackle. makes a huge tackle. There he is trotting off at the end of the half. This is not a replay. This was to open the second half. Bell goes 60 plus yards. And once again, he is going to be tackled out of bounds by Andrew Kiley at the end there. And well, at that point, Scout Hegan would set a spark, they would go on to win 18 to 13, shocking Brewer late in that one. And to the other game in Class B, Brunswick taking on Lawrence. Winner advances to the Class B North Final to take on Skowhegan. Lawrence got things going early. Braden Ballard files, fires one into Jared Dodge for six. Bulldogs would tack on the extra point. They lead one seven nothing early. Brunswick would come out swinging. First drive, Nate Girardin is gonna drop back. Doesn't like what he sees. He's going to tuck it and run. He gets take down, take down from behind. Pull the upset. Dragons moving the ball on offense early on. However, that would change a few plays later. Deep in Bulldogs territory. Gerardin throws an ill-advised pass over the middle. Worth picked that. off by Braden Ballard. Lawrence would hang on to win a close one, 17 to 12. So it's Lawrence versus Skowhegan, one and two in the Class B title game. That's right, and both teams were challenged in their semifinal matchup. Did either show enough weakness this time out to worry you, Andrew? Um, I'm not sure weakness. I mean, we saw throughout the season both teams put points on the board. Okay. In the meeting between the two teams, 58 to 56, Skowhegan came out on top. Lawrence came back in that game. I don't know if it's going to be as high scoring in this one. The playoffs have showed different in Class B. Teams really amping it up on defense. The wind was a huge factor tonight, guys. Marcus Christopher having a tough time for Skowhegan throwing the ball. John Bell, on the other hand, was a good spark for the Indians on those punt returns. So the weather could play an impact for Skowhegan in the past game. No. But I really like this matchup. It should be a fun so one. So not as high scoring, but... Still a close one is what you're saying. Still a close and one. And I think John. that's kind of the motif of how Class B has been all year. Even whether, regardless of whether it's high scoring or not, every game is just – everyone is right there you with one know. another. We know. have seen it consistently, especially over the course of the past few weeks. All the top teams have a tough time with the teams below them. Right. And now here we are in this championship matchup. Brunswick's gone. We haven't seen this in a while. Brunswick's that's out. Good news for We're going to have teams. a new champion in Class B North. I got to ask you guys, who's it going to be? I'm going to go with Skowhegan. You're I'm going gonna, Skowhegan? I'm going to stick with my gut. Hey, I did pick them. You did. All. You did pick Who'd them. Who'd you pick? I picked Brewer. And you know oh, what? Brewer, you did. Oh, darn what, good what fight. To they did. No, Brewer. Way to be, witch. Kudos to they them. Did. They, they had an excellent They did year. put up a great fight. He was Look, bragging about I'm that. I'm going Skowhegan. David Guilford, what do you got in Class B? Yeah, I was way off in my Class B prediction. But looking at these two teams, they are incredibly evenly matched. They got in a shootout in the last time points going back and forth when they met in the regular season I have Lawrence as well you got Lawrence what about you Blake Scout Hegan riding the scout train you're going the scout Hegan so scout we got a differing a little bit in opinion here just a little bit but I think we can say class B as it always does lived up to the hype right. once more this year god I, I, this is my third season covering high school football I mean consistently my favorite class to cover just because you never know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Kudos to Brunswick and Brewer for putting up a great fight in this one. But our resident state champion David Guilford took the scenic drive to Dover this evening for a class 
D North semifinal contest. David, what do you got for us? Yeah, that's right, gentlemen. It was breezy in Dover Foxcroft tonight, and that contributed to a lot of hard nose running and a lot of sloppy uh, fumbles tonight. The Dexter Tigers rolled into Dover under a full moon, and the storied Foxcroft Academy program acted like they've been here before. In the first quarter, we've seen this all season long. Nick Clausen drops back, doesn't find anyone open. He tucks it, shakes off one, two, three, five defenders on his way into the end zone to go up 12 to nothing and then right before the half we did see some passing in this you don't want to watch this one guys Fawson is hit as he throws the deep ball look at that catch oh. Hyatt Smith adjusts Hyatt. and reaches in front Hyatt of the defender Smith. for the spectacular catch take oh, another look man. at that he turns a sure interception into six points for Foxcroft and then we go to the third quarter Dexter's Jacob Bigford tries to hit the slant but finds Matthew Spooner that's a Foxcroft player instead he runs the pick back Yikes. untouched Foxcroft methodical Ooh. in this one. They went big, 40 to nothing. The 3-2 between Matt and Alcook and Bucksport. You know that album, Who Made Who, Andrew? There's a song called Chase Who the Ace. Who? Chase Carmichael having a record-breaking season in conference play. He gets going himself in the first. Luke Wardwell's out at back, so he's going to take it in himself. Touchdown, Golden Bucks. Chase, and there'll be plenty of those in this one. Later in the first, it's Bucksport driving again. Carmichael's got Keegan Ricard Woo! on a beautiful ball. Touchdown, 14 nothing, Golden Bucks. The beginning of the second, links deep in Golden Bucks territory. DeAndre Duffy's got the carry, and it's a score. Conversion's no good, so it's 14-6, but all Bucks court from here. Still in the second. Look at this perfectly placed wow. pass from Carmichael to mm. Carter Tomasoff, and it's 21-6. It so he does make it look easy. In fact, that's what this Bucks court offense does. Next drive, amazing play by Carmichael here. Almost goes down, then this that's dart up. to Logan Stanley. Bucksport, my friends, is playing for a title with a 49-6 win. So it will be Bucksport visiting Foxcroft Academy in the D-North Championship game. That's one of the few 1-2 matchups mm -hmm. still on the table here. What kind of game can we expect here, Blake? You've seen a lot of these two teams. Well, anytime you're playing Bucksport, I think you're going to be in a high-scoring affair here. Dexter, they have a good defense. They can hang with them. But I think this one's going to be playing kind of to that offensive prowess there. You saw Chase Carmichael in that highlight there. He was making some impressive throws. You know, as much as uh, I don't, I don't want to go there yet. <laughs> Andrew, what do you think? Yeah, I'm going to pick. I think Bucksport, I picked them from from the start, uh, Chase Carmichael, and then you saw what Carter Tomasoff did today, stepping in for the number one running back who was down for Bucksport. He was out with Mono. Not his original position. He's a wide receiver. Ripped off three touchdowns today. Chase Carmichael to There's continuing to do what he does. There's, I believe we've got some video of these two teams I want you guys to see because they're just so dynamic. David, you saw what Foxcroft could do today. What do you think? Yeah, I can't believe I'm saying this. And all the shakeups and high-powered offenses we've seen in the classes A and B, this game is the one that I cannot wait to watch. Clawson and Carmichael mm -hmm. going guns blazing next week in this matchup. I cannot wait to see this. Yeah, and, and Carmichael, I, again, this is a record-breaking season for him. He has established himself as one of the elite quarterbacks in right. all of Maine this year. He's, he's going to have a legitimate chance at that Fitzpatrick Award when all is said and done here. One heck of a season for him. Guys, look. His family legacy runs through that school. The field the is field. named after his family for crying out loud. But Foxcroft, you've got Nick Lawson. He's going into the Marines next year. He's looking for one or two more big wins before he enlists for his service. What is your pick for Class D North? Andrew. Bucksport. I picked them from the start. So. Blake. I, you know, Bucksport's been looking good so much lately, but I have to go with Foxcroft. They got a ground game too as well. And a home game Clawson, too. Lawson, McCaleb Niles. You can't forget the ground game for Foxcroft. Real quick, David. Ponies, ponies, ponies. I'm going the ponies as well. When we return, we got more from Class C. Don't go away right here on Sports Sports. Welcome back. The fun continues. We head down to the island for the Class C North semifinals. Number one MDI hosting number five Oceanside. You guys both liking Oceanside last week. Both teams meeting in the quarterfinals last year too. So the first time since then, very first drive here. Trojans getting it going. The handoff, it is to Colby Lee. There he is and takes it down inside yeah. the five. He ain't bad. Then after that, guess who? Troy Alvey finishing it is. off with the short score here. My man. Head coach Mark Shields liking the quick drive there. 8 nothing Trojans just like that. Mariners coming right back, though. Michael Norton Jr. with a one-yard touchdown of his own. Oceanside trailing 8-7. Then still in the first, Mariners shocking everyone on the island early on. Titus Quathong to Michael there Norton Jr. 
This is a guy you talked about a lot last week. Well, there he is in the end zone. Oceanside takes the lead 14-8, but back come the Trojans. How many times have we seen this this year? Fourth down attempt, Corey out because oh. keeping the drive alive, picks up the tough first down. Injured during a game against Oceanside last year. You know he wanted this one bad. Then later on, Andrew Phelps taking it himself. This guy is deceptively quick, guys. Watch out. Picks up a huge game, game that is, to move the ball down near the goal line. Then Alby finishing it off once again. The touchdown count up to two now. Man, he's having such a game. But he's not done. Just before the half, here's number three. Oh. Trojans. Headed back to the Class C Regional Final. They win 51-14 over Oceanside. Well, it's just one of many premier high school football playoff matchups we have seen and are going to see this week. Number six MCI, number two Winslow. It's tomorrow. And this guy over here explains how the underdog Huskies are relishing their chance at a potential upset. When one thinks of high school football, the three words that immediately come to mind are Friday, night, lights. It just gives you a little bit of extra energy, like you go out there under the lights, you know, everyone's watching you. But what happens when the lights are powered off and the playing field is naturally lit? And then you play on a Saturday, it's hotter than, than it would be at the night, and, but it's a playoff atmosphere, so you got to treat it like the biggest game of your life. That semifinal game between number six MCI and number two Winslow will be played on Saturday in the Black Raiders backyard, something the Huskies aren't used to as the defending Class D champs made the move up to Class C this season. Yeah, it's humbling and it's definitely different because, you know, we've never really had to be in someone else's home for playoffs. We've always had our own atmosphere, you know what I mean, our own home crowd. Bertrand, the earth and fire of the Huskies run game, has bulldozed its way to another tremendous season, but it has been the addition of the final element that has culminated in a dominant backfield. Pedro's a, a great athlete and a, he just learned football three years ago. He adds an element of speed that, you know, I, I don't have. Pedro Matos, the wind of the backfield, has combined with Bertrand to form one of the more dynamic backfields in Class C North. But I really appreciate the opportunity I get to start varsity and, and be a leader for these kids here. In hostile territory and under the sun, the Huskies will have to brave the elements. But with earth, wind, and fire, they may have the recipe to pull off the upset. In Pittsfield, Andrew Badillo reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22. So you just saw what MCI thinks it can do in mm -hmm. this one, but either team will have a tougher task of taking down MDI. you followed MDI all season long, Blake. Is it in the cards? Well, first got to go with that MCI Winslow game. Do I think MCI can beat Winslow? Yes, but I think the best team of taking down MDI is definitely Absolutely. Winslow. I mean, it's MDI's for only loss of the season. It's against Winslow. It was early in mm -hmm. the season, without though. Without Croy Alby. And without Croy Alby, I'm still liking MDI if it were to be MDI Winslow. Andrew? I actually like MCI against Winslow. There's something about the way the Huskies have been playing late in the season. Pedro Matos, you heard it a little bit earlier, adds that wind element to Adam Bertrand's earth and fire, something that I really like. And in the end, I do think MDI well, is going to get past MCI. the bottom line is MCI. teams that know how to win know how to win. And yes. that's something that's in the cards for MCI. Can anyone get past MDI? No. Okay. I don't. If Winslow, I agree with Blake, though. David, Winslow real quick, what do you think out of Class C? I like MCI tomorrow and then MDI the rest of the way. They have a fantastic offense and the best helmets in all the land. I'm going with Winslow tomorrow and then MDI oh, over Winslow in the championship game. One more score for you in Class C this evening. Madison Karabek over wow. Winthrop Monmouth, 28 to 14 in in uh, this one. Madison versus Wells in that title game. We got more coming at you on Sports Blitz. Do not go away. Welcome back. Let's round out the championship matchups with Class A North. Crazy class this evening. Wyndham over Edward Little. How about that? 21 to 12, a 4 over 1. And then, yes, a 6 over 2. Portland taking down Lewiston 27 13. Any quick predictions on that? Anyone? No, 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 no. no, no. Port Portland, I think. Portland, 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 Portland yeah. Portland. 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 Wyndham, David, Amen. Wyndham, Wyndham, okay. Hey, it's that. time for the play of the week, and David, you're going to help me out with this one. Let's get to it. It was in Foxcroft. What happened here, David? It was at, this was the first significant pass of the game that we saw, and it came late in the second quarter. Clawson stood tough. You see he gets hit there on the pass, and then squad going oh. up oh, on Hyatt. a Friday. Look at that oh. catch. The athleticism hey to go up and reach over the <laughs> defender and catch that. 
is just remarkable. It Look at that, and he holds onto it through. Absolutely the remarkable. Pretty incredible. Incredible, David. Uh, man, uh, you got lucky there. You got lucky because none of us got to play like that caliber. But uh, I got hey, 10 listen. Points. You did. That's true. <laughs> and I filmed on a cell phone. But as I said <laughs> earlier, this uh, this is our last sports splits of the year, guys. So any quick thoughts on the season that was? You want to start or should I start? i just like to thank you all for another great season oh, of yeah. Lit 7 here. It's been a wonderful time just uh, covering your teams and, and really having a great time with it and just uh, having us out Absolutely. there every single Friday. Thank you very much. Yeah, my first year. I mean, I've yeah. enjoyed every Friday night with you guys and David <laughs> over there on the interview set. Uh, just thank you so much, everyone out there, the teams, for the access. You guys have all been great this year. Yeah, absolutely. And the special thanks to Blake, who you see in the mornings here. <sighs> he takes a little nap. He comes back, helps us out. And then, yes, to take him, that class D champion over there, David Gilbert. Thank you David. so much. Not wearing <laughs> the ring tonight, but oh, thank you for having oh, me along for the ride, guys. Oh, oh, it's been man. a pleasure. Well, David, thank you again for your help, and thank you to everyone who has made this such a uh, great year of football. We will be back next week with your football highlights. It just won't be in the Sports Blitz format, but uh, it has been so much fun. And, uh, again, you guys show us the appreciation, and we appreciate you for that as well. And it has been so much fun. I just I can't believe that the regional finals are already here. And that, by. Don't forget, man. Friday Night Fast Break's coming up on Ooh. Fox 22 in just a few weeks. I can't wait for that, too. We go from football to basketball. It's really great. But that does it for our football session here on ABC7. Special thanks to the Sports Fish as well for giving us a hand this evening. David Guilford's <laughs> over there. That's Andrew Badillo. That's Blake Lipton. I'm John Alba. Channing Tatum, take it away.